I actually like hobo chic. My hobo chic is my thing. I haven't worn a toboggan in quite some time, and I'm actually feeling it. Like, I'm actually feeling like I should have, like, some chains on, like, two chains and, like... It's dark as obsidian, and it's light and beautiful and bright as the sun, the salt of the earth, fire burning and water dripping. How could they be using goddess of magic? She is timeless. The blood that doesn't need a blood. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. Listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, and welcome back to my spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to the crew, but my returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel and if you're feeling a vibe we'll go ahead on and subscribe but before you blink share this link welcome back wi-fis to another cult of personality episode of the wireless woman this episode will be dedicated to challenge energy but before we get into the content you already know what time it is it is time to call the roll so i need all of my double dog dares all of my playing chicken with a mac truck runners to the front of the class it is time to read aloud So welcome back to all of my old school dial-ups and welcome in to any of my new school 5G Wi-Fi's. Before we get into today's content on your way in, go ahead and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. Today we will be talking about challenge energy and mostly all of the terms that I have been adding to our narcissistic abuse glossary are found in this cult of personality series of the wireless woman. I'm finding that these episodes aren't doing as well as my why so wireless season one episodes, but I think that's mostly just because People who are on the outside of our crew looking in may not know by looking at the title of these videos what they are. However, if you could comment, subscribe to the channel and share these videos, I would greatly appreciate it because people who are in toxic relationships with an abusive person, like we don't like to call bad behavior abusive, but you know, people who are in those relationships need to be aware that there are names for the phenomena that they experience. They need to know that they're not alone, that these particular behaviors do belong to a pathology. They need to know that while trying to fix help and appease their abusive toxic person may be a completely hopeless venture they themselves can have hope. They can take courage in the fact that one, they are not alone. Two, what they're experiencing is real. It's valid and it is real. 
But three, they can also begin to give a name to what they're experiencing. I know for myself, you can't really own something. You can't take ownership and accountability for something until you name it. You know, especially in the spiritual kingdom, they'll tell you, you need the name of a thing in order to be able to cast it out. So I haven't given up on this series because I do really hope to reach and help the people that really need to know that that help is available. You know, that these things are real and they really exist and that they're not crazy and that it's not you. You are actually in a relationship with a manipulative person that is grooming you to take responsibility for their behavior and their actions. And no one should ever be made to feel that way. All right. So I could jump into defining this term challenge energy, but I'd rather kind of give you a little bit of background about how I discovered its existence. So I was called an alpha female the other day, which I am not. I can be. I can step into the alpha female or the beta female role, which is what makes me a sigma female. I can be very extremely irritatingly passive, but I can also be aggressive and assertive. I do not mind I am not offended at all as a black woman by being called aggressive. I can understand the negative connotation of the term. However, I I take pride in being an aggressor if it's needed. It needs to be understood that I'm totally okay with playing that role. I'm the bad guy. Duh. Now. Do I need to? Should I have to? No. You know, and that's the place where you have to begin to exercise, as I always say, both the sword and the shield. But I got called an alpha female the other day. And depending on what type of space you find me in or put me in, you may see me characterize myself that way. Now, because I am able to exhibit a certain amount of alpha female aggressive energy. I just don't, I just don't like a passive man. Now there are people who do. Some people feel partnered, especially if they're a more aggressive person by a more passive partner. They, they just feel better supported in that capacity. However, because I prefer to be more submissive, you know, passive, if you will. I prefer a man who is much more aggressive than me. He has to be able to show me that he has the capacity to be more aggressive than I am. A lot of men meet me in my aggressive energy and they will cower to it. They'll feel like, okay, I need to back off. And if you back off, so will I. Because like I said, I can completely be in beta female energy as well. You know, so a man has to show me he can be at a greater capacity than my alpha energy. That can be a tough place for men to dissect with me. Some will think, okay, I need to play down to it. Let her have the lead. And if you do that, oh, there's nothing that makes me lose interest faster than that. But there are times when certain men will challenge that energy. You know, they'll take the more aggressive energy and push me down into a more submissive role, which I'm fine with that. It's just that an alpha male has to be a true alpha male. I prefer a sigma male, a man who can and will take the lead. But in a situation where I have the stronger skill set, he's not going to compete with me. He's going to lend his strength and his support to me being the leader in that particular capacity or that role because he is emotionally intelligent enough to say, this is not a, this is not a place where I need to challenge her. And only Sigma males and Sigma females can 
read the room, if you will, can decipher that type of energy and play to any crowd. So I prefer a Sigma male, but I attract a lot of alpha males because a lot of men do sense in me that I need to be challenged at the greater level in order for me to submit. So the way that challenge energy works and the reason why it's particularly problematic when you're dealing with a narcissistic person is that you have to understand that a narcissist has a false self. So them challenging you at the more aggressive energy is more than likely them putting on a show or putting on a farce because the amount of insecurity that narcissistic people have, the amount of codependency that they have means they can never actually truly be an alpha male if you you know, subscribe to that term, but they can never really be that type of leader. They're just completely incapable of it. The traumas that they have suffered, that have sent them that message that they, they aren't good enough, whatever it was, is going to keep them from actually being able to step into the courage and the self-esteem, the self-confidence, the interdependence to be able to even partner other people or stand on their own narcissistic people are extremely codependent. Like I know they go from person to person, person to person, and it makes you think that they don't need anybody. They'll tell you they don't need you. You can go, but these people cannot be alone. <laughs> now it don't matter who's there. It could be you, you, or you, or all of you. And most of the time it will be. Marina, Selena, Katrina, Sabrina, about three Kim, Latoya, and Tina. Even if you are the narcissist primary intimate partner, the Pip, even if you are Gladys Knight and the Pips. He's leaving, leaving. Oh, that midnight train is Georgia. Leaving on the midnight train. Yeah. Even if you are a Pip, it still doesn't matter. Because the amount of energy, you have to remember, this is about energy harvesting that a narcissist needs to feel complete and whole and energized. <laughs> the amount of energy that it takes to lift these people up on the pedestal that they want to live on will more than likely require secondary intimate partner sips, whether that be the mother-in-law, baby, Ooh, my ex and his mother-in-law, Jesus. Ooh. Whether that be children, whether that be the work wife or husband, whether that be, you know, toxic friends that just pretty much will side with them against everybody. You know, what we call the ride or dies. Like, people crazy out here. They're wild. The type of loyalty that they're expecting out of their relationships with people is weird. It's codependent. Like anytime I hear somebody say something like ride or die, I'm, I'm instantly putting my feelers out at that point to try to read <laughs> what may be going on in this situation. Because I don't want nobody to ride or die with me. If I'm wrong, get out this car, please. Be like a Cologero <laughs> on the Bronx tail. See, out of the car. And get out this car and go home. Like, don't ride with me if I'm taking you to hell. Don't, don't do that. Back to challenge energy. So where the challenge energy aspect of a narcissistic relationship dynamic comes in is that there are, like, I see it a lot with covert narcissists more than overt or malignant narcissists. They kind of come to you as a narcissist. So they don't feel the need to play these manipulative power dynamics. They're going to come right in from the jump. I'm the man. I'm the alpha man. Me, Tarzan, you, Jane. Tarzan. Tarzan. Jane. You're going to get that from a malignant narcissist right off the top. And when I was younger, I used to date a lot more of that type because I wanted that right off the top. I wanted to be submitted. <laughs> Some people are going to look at that the wrong way, but a lot of women do. You know, that's why we end up with the thugs and the pookies and the ray rays, like what they told us. People that make us feel a little bit more safe and secure that display a more overtly masculine presence 
But as I got older and got away from the more overtly narcissistic men, which is going to happen for all women, because ultimately Pookie and Ray Ray, all of them, their shelf life is really, really short. If they don't end up incarcerated or killed, they just don't have a whole lot of functional skills in the family dynamic. So you're going to end up with more of a beta male. If you do well, you'll get a sigma male, a man who can balance out his masculine energy with his feminine energy, because feminine energy is very important for men, men who cannot express themselves, who cannot communicate, they struggle in relationship, you know, and men, I think, honestly, more than women were made for companionship. They desire it on a much deeper level than women do. So when they can't communicate, when they can't fulfill their need for companionship, it's way more depressing for them because women, we will, you know, still build us our own little flock, our own little clan. Even if it's a hen house, you'll have your girlfriends, you know, you'll talk to your mom. Some of us have really great relationships with our fathers. So for women, you find companionship in more emotionally intelligent ways. You know, we'll get a therapist, we go to church, we join a women's group, you know, we just tend to access companionship easier than men do. So it's important for men also like women to have both, both sets of energy. As I got older, I began to meet more covertly narcissistic men. And so they're going to come in with the sweet wine and dine you roll. And when they observe, because like I said, narcissists are masterfully observant people. As much as people think that they're just self-absorbed and they're about themselves, their codependency won't let them be there. They're like Siri. They're like Alexa. They have become masters of mapping people and finding their insecurities, their vulnerabilities, so they know how to plug into what you need when they're creating that trauma bond. Most of the time, a narcissist can't just challenge you straight out to your face. And if they feel like your energy like when you have high grade aggressive energy as a woman, that's premium. That's the premium gas. That's the 93. <laughs> that's the 93 fuel for a narcissist. So they're thinking to themselves, okay, this woman is completely out of my league, but I got to have her. The competition is on. The game is on. Mm -mm -mm -mm. The heat is on. The heat is on. 80 strikes again, but they feel it. They That's their power up time, you know, and a narcissist, because of the false self, they have to expend so much energy to get up on that level with you, to actually challenge you and best you at that level. That That is so exhausting for them. They will resent you as the relationship goes on. But in your mind, they did so much to get with you. You know, they showed up. They were great to your family, your friends. They came all the way across town in a rainstorm to help you change your tire. They, you know, they did all of these things to prove that they could be the best man. Because they knew you had access to way better men. Most of the time, people around them will resent and hate you too. Because they've never seen that person expend that much energy to be with someone. You know, like I said, that person is usually managing a whole harem full of worshipers. So when you start getting all of their energy, they're going to triangulate those people with you. And those people are going to end up being jealous of you. Those people are going to end up being the flying monkeys on the back half that are going to be like, I knew something was wrong anyway, because you were just spending too much time with her and too much. Art. She just wanted too much. She was just too demanding. Maybe it just too demanding. Anyway, sorry. Like, these are going to be the people that come in and rebuild and hold that narcissist back up because they had to expend so much energy to be with you. And that is challenge energy. They just wanted to get you. It just was a trophy. That's why some women like me who encounter narcissists, they will, they will actually gray rock you. You know, they'll actually ghost you and you'll never hear from them again. They don't hoover you back. They don't do any of that because they remember the challenge to their ego that you were. You know, they remember how they walked into a room with you and people saw you and not them. You know, they 
they may have gotten the kudos on the front end, like, man, you, you landed you a big fish, but it was always about you and not them. You know, so when they have to expend that much challenge energy and they know how expensive that was, baby, they just get you, put you on the shelf and move on. Now, if they manage to pull you down, like if you stayed in a relationship long enough for them to get you down on their level, they may hoover you around. They may call you like the one, the one guy I was telling you about in one of my other videos. <sighs> Which video was it? I can't remember. Like I was telling you about the one guy that I dated in college for like 14 years that he just kept tricking off on me, tricking off on me, but he was never going to come back to actually try to be my partner again because it just cost him too much to his ego. You know, it cost him too much effort and energy to have to be with me when it should be me that was spending that energy on him. As long as it was me spending the energy, it was fine. These are the people that will waste your time. And you have to be careful with it because your time is energy. Your energy is your essence. It's your worship. And when you're spending it on what is not bread, when, when you are spending your labor on that which is not bread, baby, you're going to perish. You know, it's unfortunate that our society has come to the place where narcissists and narcissism is everywhere. Like it really, really is. They estimate that about 10%, 10, 11% of the population is narcissists, but that's only in the people that are showing up to be diagnosed as narcissists. When you start describing the behaviors of these people, you start to realize that it's neck and neck. Like it's got to be like 50 50. I'm running across them every day. And because I have become knowledgeable about what it is, I'm able to present the right type of energy to turn these people off or to pull them out. But this is not going away. You know, narcissism is not going away. It's evolving. You know, we've got these new self-aware narcissists that are, you know, they're running the guise of being helpful. But when you hear them talk, they say, like, I'm a narcissist. I'm not going to change. Like, the behavior is not going to change. This is who I am. I'm going to put you up on game, but the truth of the matter is that's just them giving you challenge energy. That's the, that's just them saying, okay, I've exposed myself. Now you know what I am. Now see if you still want to try to fix me. If you still want to stay, if you can actually pick me out in the crowd, you know, it's like falling. Like it's the spirit is jumping from person to person. It's like a duck, duck, goose game of who can you actually trust? Who can you actually date? So, you know, they're exposing themselves like the villain at the end of the movie, but you cannot take these people on. You can't give into the same trappings that pull them into toxic situations with you by trying to meet them where they are, trying to prove to them that you could be trying to like, you have to just let that go. You have to go no contact. Because like I said, whenever these narcissists lose the challenge, they'll go no contact with you. Not, not every target of a narcissist will get hoovered back. If you cause them a significant narcissistic injury, they will not contact you back. So you might as well blow that candle out like a candle in the wind. Lift your light like a candle in the wind. You might as well snuff that out and move on. You only have one life to live and there's no reason to let someone else live their life and your life too. My grandma used to tell me that and I didn't know what that meant, but... You know, those parables, those old sayings that the wise women in my family gave to me will actually help you stay out of the whims of a narcissist. You're going to meet them. You're going to date them. You're going to fall in love with them. It's just too pervasive of a personality type for you to miss it. And let's just be honest, like they're shapeshifters. They super dope people. They can be anything and everything you need them to be. They're super dope people. People love them. The people that hate you for being with them love those people. The people that were triangulated against you, they would die for these people because they're super dope people. But as a pip, 
as a primary intimate partner, you're going to be treated like trash. You are that person's emotional dumpster. You will never see them like other people see them. You'll never have from them what you've seen them giving other people. I spent so much time in my second marriage jealous of how my then husband treated everybody else around him. Like I used to try, I heard um, Derek Jackson's wife talk about this. I used to try to be like the other women that were around him thinking that I would get treated like them, but I didn't understand that it wasn't my disposition, my personality, my attitude, my emotions. You know, you're too emotional. It was none of that. It was just my position, my proximity to him. He hated having to be next to me day in and day out wearing the mask. Like we're a society now that wears masks everywhere we go. So you know how stifling and smothering it can be to just be wearing a mask. You're wearing a mask for your protection, but I want to take this off. Like, fuck this mask. This is stupid. I can't breathe. It's hot up underneath here. I got mask acne. It's just very inconvenient and irritating to constantly be under a mask. And they hate having to come home and not be able to take off the mask. You know, when you're a person they had to work really, really hard to impress, or you're a person that has really, really strong boundaries, all of that challenge energy that they used to get you into the relationship is exhausted. And you can never give it back to them at a high enough rate because they know that you have self-confidence. They know you believe in yourself. They know that you'll leave. <laughs> they, you know, they know that the trauma bond's not going to work on you because you are a person who's not like them. You're not codependent. You don't have. So you have to be careful allowing people to go too far above and beyond for you because you probably are dealing with a narcissist. Everyone should have healthy boundaries. That person should be able to tell you, well, no, um, today's not going to be a good day for us to get together. Or, you know, I know we talked on the phone really late last night, but tonight I got a couple of things I got to do in the morning. I'm going to have to go to bed early. You know, I love talking to you and I think it's amazing the connection that we have so you know <laughs> we could talk tomorrow we could talk a little today and talk a little more tomorrow and then I'll see you this weekend if that person's a narcissist or they're narcissistic they're going to push back on that they're going to push back every time no matter what it is they'll be the person who says I want to hang out with you all day. And then when you are looking forward to hanging out with them all day, they're going to come back and be like, we hang out too much. See, this is the reason why we can't work out because we're hanging out too much. And then as soon as you're like, okay, well, I'll, I'll see you later. They're going to be the same person a week later. That's like, I haven't even seen you all week. What have, what have you been up to? Like, are, are we not connecting with each other anymore? Like challenge energy. They always have to win, so it always has to be a competition, no matter what it is. They'll compete with you for who loves each other the most. Then they'll compete with you for who could care less. Like, you got to watch those patterns in the dating relationship. If you're having to compete for this man, get down and propose to this man. He's not in alpha male energy, and he's always going to feel challenged by you. If you're independent enough to do what he wants or can't. You'll never rest. He'll never rest. He's never going to let you rest in your femininity. So I hope that as we decode some of these terms, some of this terminology, and you can begin to see these behavior patterns, you can either avoid or come to a deeper realization of what type of relationship that you're in. Because I really do want people to win. I want toxic people to be paid in dust. I don't even really want to give them that much glory and acknowledge them. But unfortunately, they have come out and revealed themselves. We can't deny their existence. And we're going to have to learn how to manage ourselves because we are not going to be able to control these toxic people. We're going to have to leave them to themselves and let them devour everything like the dinosaurs did. We're going to have to let these people kill themselves off. But as long as they can feed off of our energy... They can live and thrive and grow. I mean, even these self-aware narcissist podcasts and, and channels, we're going to have to stop subscribing to that. We're going to have to stop giving these people their energy, our energy. 
So if you're with me, if you're ready to unplug from the codependent systems that make us believe that somehow we're not doing our job as people, if we're not plugged and tied into another person that's sucking us dry like a vampire, then go ahead and drop your headphones emoji in the comments. We're not doing this in 2022. We've got access to too much information, too many resources to help us kick our narcissist addictions. It's time to move on. It's time to move forward to heal ourselves and to seek out relationships with emotionally mature And healthy people, these may not be people that jump over rivers and mountains to be with us. These might just be the people that partner with us delicately and take their time to get to know us and listen to us and speak their truth. You know, we're not looking for codependency. We're looking for interdependency. And until we find it, we shall not settle. Settling can feel like rest. But settling is not rest. Remember that, my beloveds. But as always, I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, your neighborhood wireless woman. I look forward to meeting you down in the comments. And until the next episode, class is now dismissed. Like, comment, and subscribe and share.